Welcome back to the office of Ava and Smith. I'm with Rod Smith right now. Welcome, Rod. It's good to be here. And here you are back in private practice. Started out in that, then became our state attorney for eight years, successfully prosecuting Danny Rawling. Uh, became senator after that, where you were making laws, and then back into private practice. So you've been in the legal profession in one way or another, and protecting people seems to be a theme of your career. You know, I, I like to think of it that way. I have, uh, I've really enjoyed it here. When, uh, when it became apparent that I wasn't going to be successful in my last effort uh, in public life, Mark and I have been talking a long time about doing this. I have, I've known Mark. I knew his father before him a long, long time. Was a great admirer of the Avera firm. Worked with him when I was in the Senate and made a decision that I would come into partnership with him uh, if I weren't successful in my uh, race for governor, which I was not. And so, uh, and, you know, it's been amazing. Uh, it's been great fun to me because, uh, you know, I've kind of been away from it for a while. And to get back into the private practice, I really enjoy it. I enjoy dealing with the people. And I mostly I enjoy problem solving and, and trying to help people out who find themselves in the system one way or the other or find themselves uh, needing help and they don't know where to go. And, I, and that's really what we're here for. And another way that you're helping to protect people now is teaching others how to do just that at the University of Florida Law School. And I've you're enjoyed teaching courses that. in what are you teaching the courses in? Right now I'm teaching advanced criminal practice. I've, I've, tra I've taught trial practice before there and I, over the graduate school I've taught uh, constitutional law but right now I'm going to be teaching advanced criminal practice again. It, it's mostly to people who are pretty much at the end of their career. They're students who are likely to become prosecutors. Some will become public defenders and uh, I enjoy that. It, it, it also keeps me fresh on the law. It makes me, uh, uh, I tell people it takes more time than I think, uh, than I thought it would when I'm uh, when I'm uh, preparing because you really have to keep up on the law and where the law is going and the changes in the law and that's important. Uh, it's important to me there and it helps me in my practice. So you're doing white collar crime cases? We, do some, so we do some here. As a matter of fact, I'm doing some right now. Um, sometimes they're criminal cases. Sometimes we try to keep them in the civil arena, but they may very well involve institutions. They may very well involve offices or corporations. Um, we do a, a pretty select criminal practice, but I'm enjoying it. I had a friend uh, who was a uh, law enforcement officer asked me yesterday, how can you do this after you prosecuted so long? And I said, you know, I, I really think of it the same way. I believe the system works and the presumptions within the system exist to make sure that lawyers advocate zealously on behalf of the state if they're prosecuted and on behalf of an individual if you're a, a defense counsel. And I really do believe that uh, being a prosecutor helped me as a defense lawyer and having been a defense lawyer helped me as a prosecutor. I, I, I worry about our system sometimes when people become so institutionalized that they only do one side. I and they really, only think that one side is always right. Right, and, and you know, the, the British system, which uh, we, we originally were modeled off of, is quite different. They, they routinely will take one side or the other. And when um, I used to teach in the summer at the, some of the clinics, we would have the British barristers come over. And I was always amazed how comfortable they were prosecuting or defending because it really is the same set of skills. It's about advocating zealously on behalf of the cause that you're there or the person that you're there on behalf of. As a prosecutor, it's the state. As a, as a criminal defense lawyer, your job is to go in and make sure that your client is well represented. And, you know, I, I tell people all the time, uh, the criminal justice system, if it's all bad people, that's an easy system to run. But it's really about tough decisions made for people who, uh, good people who make bad mistakes or bad decisions. And how do you deal with them? It was tough as a prosecutor to make that decision. As a uh, criminal defense lawyer, I find myself, uh, uh, you know, zealously advocating to make sure that people get another chance in life who've earned it or that, that, that the mistake they make when they're young is not the mistake that they can never get away from. Uh, my father taught me as a young man, he used to say to me, son, don't, don't uh, kind of outlive what you can't, uh, don't, don't uh, do what you can't outlive. And sometimes when young people in this community particularly find themselves in a mistake, it's really important for me to uh, try to step in. And I get calls from parents all, all the time saying, will you help my, my son or my daughter? They've run into problems. Um, that's so what I enjoy doing. if you can catch them doing. early oh, yeah. and maybe stop the process, then they can go on instead I, I of repeating their mistakes over and over and ending up in serious trouble forever. I was talking to one of my prosecutor friends, a very dear friend the other day, and I said to him, I said, now look, promise me this, that you don't want to be remembered, as most people don't, for the stupidest thing you did between 18 and 22. Yeah. At that point, we had a better negotiation. So do you turn away some cases now? Yes. I don't get involved in some cases. Sometimes it's just for time constraints. Um, sometimes it's this certain kinds of cases I don't want to do, I'm just not comfortable with. Sometimes there are cases that uh, come to me that I'm uncomfortable with because perhaps if I may have in the past prosecuted somebody within their family or I may in the past have actually had something to do with that particular case. So I, I'm Conflict very careful set. about it. Yeah, but, but uh, 
Uh, but I'm enjoying criminal justice, and, and, and I, I want to continue to practice that. It's not what this firm does exclusively. We, we are still a civil trial firm. We are still a firm um, uh, that, that focuses on trying to help people that are injured or help people that have had problems in, in, in a number of areas. But one of the areas that we practice is uh, to try to help people who find themselves in the criminal justice system and, uh, and need good advice and, and, and need guidance. So are you learning something when you're teaching? Every day. I, I absolutely... Uh, I, I learn more than I teach. Uh, I, I'm convinced that the more, uh, my son is a new, new young prosecutor, my oldest boy. He just started as a prosecutor. And I laugh at him because he calls me once in a while with a question. And I find myself thinking, I don't know the answer to that question. And he said to me, he said, but you've prosecuted murder cases. How can you not know this one? I said, well, I didn't do misdemeanors. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it's a great fun. Every time you teach something, uh, you learn something. Well, I know the Avers are glad that the law firm is now Aver and Smith. Well, I'm thrilled to be with them. Board. Thank you, Rod. And we'll be right back.